Hey, how you doing? So welcome to this week's One Image My Edit. And in this week, I'm going to be showing you how to create this garage grunge effect that I think is really, really cool. And you can use it for your images. So when you're out and about and you're taking pictures of abandoned places or uh, dirty garages like this, then you can use this this edit and it will uh, really make things come alive. And, and it's almost a high dynamic range feel to it as well, like a HDR vibe. So let me reset this and I will show you how to do it. So as you can see with this image here, there's a lot of natural daylight. So behind where this picture's taken, the garage door is open and there's lots of light flooding in. So you need to keep that in mind. If you're inside somewhere and it's a little bit darker than this, then you may want to just play with the highlights a little bit to get it perfect for your picture. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to the temperature. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. So just up to plus four, not too much because there is a light at the top here, as you can see, and that's casting a yellow, um, a yellow hue across the, the top of the image. But that's why I wanted to increase it just to pick that out a little bit. I'm going to increase the contrast to plus 20 around there. And again, depending on your image, you might want to increase that slightly more. Then the highlights, I'm going to bring them down a lot. So let me bring them down to around minus 70, around that area, 71, 72. That's looking good. And that's just toned down that, that daylight that's hitting the back of that wall there. So with the shadows, I'm going to push them up to around plus 35, 36. Let's have a look. Actually around, yeah, 36, 37 on this one's working well. But again, depending on your image, you're going to have to change that. But I would say in between 30 and 40, you should be ideal. So the whites, I'm going to bring them down to minus 40. And I'm going to do the same with the blacks as well. So we're just suppressing them two tones just to give us a little bit of a darker look to the actual whole image. So let's come down to the texture and clarity and the dehaze section here. So to get that high dynamic range look, we basically just need to boost the texture and clarity and the dehaze up a little bit. Now you need to be very, very careful with this because it can look too overprocessed if you push it too far. So the texture, I'm going to push that to plus 10. The clarity, I'm going to push that up to probably around plus 20. And again, depending on how extreme you want this to look you can continue pushing that if you want to and the dehaze i'm going to push that up to again about plus 20 something like that so that's given us this uh, nod to a high dynamic range image i'm also going to push the vibrance up a little bit as well to about plus 20 so i want these colors to come through mainly the reds uh, and these yellows at the top here and around here but what i'm going to do next is color color grade the actual image and tone down a lot of them a lot of them colors there but before we do that let's jump into the tone curve and let's add some contrast to this so i'm going to make three points there so we've got the whites the grays and the blacks and the first thing i want to do is just really bring these blacks right down so around there so that's just going to punch in that black and just deepen them, especially like around here in these shadowed areas there. It's just going to make sure they are black. Let's push the grays up a little bit, not too much because we don't want to bring back too much of that natural light in the shot. And then with these whites, I think if we just pull them down just a smidge, there we go. And we can just tweak this middle section now just to get the perfect contrast. So you can spend a bit of time with that just tweaking it. But I think somewhere like that is quite a quite a weird sort of curve that I've got going on there. It's quite extreme and then blacks. It's mainly the black areas there. Okay, so th let's go to the let's go to the hue saturation luminance panel. So let's open that up and I'm just going to click on all so you can see them all. So let's work on the hues. I'm not going to do a lot in there. It's mainly the oranges and the yellows. I just want to increase them uh, a little bit. So let's let's go. Sorry, there we go. 
let's just go on to these oranges and yellows push them up plus 10 nothing major I just want these to pop out a little bit more than the rest and we don't need to do that on the red because the red is so powerful it's 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 already bright enough it doesn't really need um, it doesn't really need changing but I'm just changing the hues of the oranges and yellows and just making the oranges towards the yellow and the yellow just lighten that up a little bit so it's starting to go into the green phase there um, but not too much now saturation is where we're going to do most of the editing to be honest with you um, so the reds we're going to bring them down to around 40 because there's a lot in there so again depending on your image if these reds weren't in this actual shot then I might not bring that down as much but it's it needs it because there's a lot in there so the orange, I'm going to bring that down to minus 40 as well. So we're just making sure that we are almost matting out these images. Uh, sorry, these uh, tones and colors, not images. Um, the yellows, I'm going to bring that down to around se minus 70, 71. 70 is quite good. Yeah, about 70. That's quite nice because we still got the yellow, but it's not overpowering. And then... The rest of the colors, I'm just going to completely strip them out. So minus 100 for the greens, minus 100 on the aqua, the blues, the purple, and the magenta. So you can see there now, we stripped out a lot of them colors. And the ones that I wanted, which are the reds and the yellows, they are the primary ones. So we can come back to these. And if we want to, we could tweak these. So we could bring that yellow down a little bit so it's a little bit more present yeah i think actually minus 40 is probably better um it sits with the other three then so they're even so they're not gonna fight each other uh, but again depending on your image you will have to play around with that now the luminance um with these main colors i'm going to drop the reds down because they are the most brightest color within there and the oranges and yellows, I'm going to push the oranges probably up to around plus 10. And then the yellows, I'll probably do that a little bit more because that is a lighter color. So just the, the brightness of these, that's what we're changing. And that's what luminance means, it's brightness. So we're just brightening up that yellow and orange and just dulling down that red a little bit. So that's, that's pretty much it within the hue saturation and luminance and that's done the majority of the work for us now i'm could come into the into the color grading panel and with the highlights selected i could do numerous things we could go with the yellow which is you know sits with that nice light that's at the top there but i think what i want to do is probably add a blue because adding a blue in the shadow areas, I think, always gives it a little bit more of a dramatic look. So my favorite kind of blue is 233, so that's on the hue. You can double click on there and just type it in and it will take it straight to there. Now, if we click in the middle and then boost that up, you can see the saturation is being pushed up. So again, you can type in any of the numbers so let's go in 223 and a good number for saturation that I like to use personally is 39 and that gives me enough saturation and, and a lovely hue there and that has now added a blue tinge into the highlight so it's just helping with that yellow and that orange not you know it's helping it not be too overbearing so that's what we want now we come down to the balance and the and the blending we can use that to our advantage so if i push up the blending to say plus 65 around there you can see what that's doing if i go the other way then it's going to start adding that yellow back in if we go all the way to 100 you can see that's a lot of blue being added there so i want to go more towards the blue because that saturation in that highlight color is not actually that strong so I just want to push this up a little bit more just to get um, a little bit more blue within within them areas there, within them shadows. 
and then the balance again if I go from one extreme to the other you can see all that's blue and all that's yellow so I'm going to push this towards that blue so around plus 20 something like that around that area about 17 works on this image but again depending on your specific image and how you like it you may prefer it you know to have more of a yellow tinge to it or you may prefer it to have more of a blue tinge to it again it is entirely subjective and it's entirely up to you what you want to do i think as well it's always a really really good idea to add some noise reduction so even if it's just plus 10 keep the detail at 50 same with the color just because we've done so much with that color we just want to reduce any of that noise that we're introducing within it so there you have it that is it that is the image finally completed if i press the y key you'll see there's quite a big difference there and what we've achieved is i think a really well balanced image we can see there's lots of blues down here where that where that yellow light was hitting here and we've managed to make the reds a little bit duller um, which i think is nice it gives it more of a, a rustic look and it brings out all this rust that's on the actual tool cases there and we still managed to keep this yellow but we've got a little bit of a green tinge in there but only a only a slight green tinge and i think that that works better you can see it here where that motor is up there so yeah i think that works really really well and you can use this on lots of different edits lots of different pictures lots of different styles but it's really good if you're doing stuff of abandoned places or images like this of a garage so i hope you enjoyed that i'll catch you all in the next video take care bye bye